Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G. I did a video on removing noise from the USB connection on the IC705 a while ago. I got a lot of positive feedback from that and that's one of the things I really appreciate about this community is all of the positive feedback that we can get. There were a lot of useful tips that came out of that and I wanted to share those with you. So today I came out to the Joel Marsh State Wildlife Area. This is K4295, so it's gonna be another RF quiet location. And I wanted to run through the scenario again and see if all these other ways can actually fix the problem. Let's get right to it. Okay, so we have the buddy pole antenna, same antenna as last time. We have a Dell Latitude instead of the MacBook Air. That was one of the suggestions was try a different laptop. We have the LDG tuner like we did last time and we have the IC705 like we did last time. So let's take a look at the noise. You can already see that there's not a whole lot of noise on the waterfall. Let's go down to a clean area of the spectrum like we did last time. And you can see we're sitting at a noise floor of S0. So let's go back up to our FT8 frequency, 14074.01. Let's do 0, 0.0. It's cold, my hands are, are a little shaky because of how cold it is. All right, so we've got good signal, S9 strength when they are broadcasting and then S0 when we're in a clear area. So we've got the cheap USB cable again and there are no ferrites on this cable at all. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Let's watch the waterfall while I plug this thing in. So I plug that in and there is our noise right away with the USB cable plugged in. Let's get down to a clean area of the band. S9 noise. All right, let's take a look at our first tip. Okay, so the first tip is really easy. The first tip was to change the Vox button on the front of the radio to act as a transmit button or a stop transmit button. That would help us with the runaway transmitter, but it wouldn't help us get the job done. So while you can do that, it doesn't solve the problem of USB noise, it just stops the transmitter from transmitting, and then I still can't do FT8. So I'm still kind of stuck in the weeds there on that one. So the next suggestion was a proper RF ground. And while that's a fantastic idea, we've got things like this going on here where we're not really allowed to put a whole lot of stuff into the environment that we're in and pounding a ground rod into the earth here would not be a, not be a welcome thing. So I'm not gonna do that. And most portable operations, I don't have the ability to ground. This is a portable operation. I can't ground. So it's not a good solution. It might do the trick, but it doesn't fit the, the mission at hand. So fantastic idea, probably will work, but not what we have in mind. All right, next up is to turn off USB charging. Let's see if we can find this in the menu. So we'll go menu, we'll hit set, we'll go into function. There's eight pages worth of stuff here. So we're down, well, 10 pages worth of stuff. We're down on page eight. So charging, let's turn the charging power off and see how that looks. Charging power off, S5 noise floor. Okay, so let's pull the USB cable. S5 noise floor goes away. So that takes care of the battery charging. Let's bring our noise floor back. Let's go back into settings. Function, again on page eight, USB power input. And that's on, let's turn that to off. And we still have noise. Let's unplug our USB cable and our noise goes away. Okay, so USB charging or regular power brick charging are off the table, but good idea. Next up was to try a shielded USB cable. Let's see if this works out. I'm gonna open this up for the first time here. Okay, so we got the one end plugged into the radio. Let's get the other end plugged into the computer. And we still have noise. All right, so that's not it. Next suggestion was to use a USB isolator. So I picked up this USB isolator. Check that out, it's a Geek Pie USB isolator and it is made in China. There will be a link to this one in the description down below also. Let's take a look at this one here and see what we got. Okay, we have instructions. I'm pretty sure I don't really need instructions. And we have the deal. It doesn't have one of those little open me here things, but I am a ham, so I have a pocket knife. And what this is designed to do is you plug it in between your USB device and your USB host and it's supposed to isolate all the mess with all of the electronics that are in there. So let's do that. All right, back on our original USB cable and we have no noise on the waterfall. Let's plug in the isolator itself. All right, that's plugged in. Still no noise, but I wouldn't have expected any. Let's plug it into the computer and we have some noise. 
So it didn't really help out. Let's zoom in on that real quick. All right, so there is our USB isolator plugged in. We have, we have less noise, so it's not bad. And there it is, unplugged. We have no noise. So it did help, but it didn't help as much as just using the toroid did. We're at an S2 of noise. So let's take our gas station USB cable from the last video and let's plug that in instead and see what kind of noise we get. All right, that is plugged in. S0, we are still at S0. So the gas station USB cable and toroid combination was a lot better. The next suggestion was to change radios to the X6100. So we're sitting around, oh look at that, there's a somebody driving by. We're sitting around an S3, 4, S4 of noise on the meter. I'm gonna take the USB cable and I'm gonna plug it in. Let's take a look at the noise floor over here when I do that. So I'm gonna take the USB cable and I'm gonna plug it in. And there we go. So it almost got up to S5, unplugged, plugged in. One thing to note while doing the testing, and this might seem pretty obvious to some people, but I wanna include it just for reference sake, is that you can see that without the antenna connected, and we still have the USB cable connected over on the side, and to the laptop, we don't have that noise problem. So again, that still points to something going on with the antenna connection. We have arrived back at the home QTH and we are all set up to do some more testing here. Let's take a look. We have the same Dell laptop that we had at the park. We have the same IC705. We have the same tuner plugged in. We are on battery power just to make sure that as few variables change as possible. The only thing that I had to change was the coax that goes out to the buddy pole way out there because it was uh, the buddy pole coax isn't long enough. So let's do a real quick comparison. Let's get down to a clear frequency. Okay, so at a clear frequency, we've got S3 noise. So I'm gonna take that USB cable, I'm gonna plug it in now. And we go up to S7 noise right there. So we've got a replicatable experimentation control. Let's get on with the testing. If you remember from the last video, when we went to transmit with the computer connected via a non-choked USB cable, the radio locked up, stayed in transmit mode, and I couldn't get the computer software to reconnect to the radio without a full hard reset. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna unplug the USB cable from the computer. We're gonna watch the noise floor drop again, and I'm gonna try and make a contact with it that way. Let's get over there. We are back at the radio console. I'm gonna turn this up so we can hear what it sounds like. That's, that's kind of bad. Let's unplug the USB cable. Noise floor drops. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, QRP. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, QRP. Kilo Mike 9 Golf, Kilo Mexico 9 Germany, QSL. Kilo Mike 9 Golf. Kilo Mike Niner Golf. QSL? Yeah, Kilo Mike 9 Golf. You're 5-5. Five five. Copy 5-5. Five five. You're 5-9 five Wisconsin. Whiskey Indigo. Roger, 73. Thanks. 73. Thank you. All right, let me get that turned down real quick. Okay, so transmitting without the computer connected works just fine. We do have a higher noise level here at the home QTH, but you did see it drop from an S9 to about an S5. I made the contact. So no problems without the computer connected. There is something between the antenna, the radio, and the computer. Let's try another variable. Let's remove the buddy pole and insert the DX commander and see if we have the same noise issues. Okay, for reference, we are back to the buddy pole just to see what the waterfall looks like. We're at an S9 noise floor. Let's get antenna switch. Okay, and now we are on the DX commander and we are at 14304. All right, we're just gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna turn the power down. Function. Tune. 
Okay, so we are tuned up and we are not not making improvements in noise floor. As a matter of fact, it actually got a little bit worse. We have the computer plugged in over USB here the entire time for that last test. So now we need to test the WSJTX software and see if it will lock up the computer. And let's do a quick test. All right, so the, the tuner kicked in, we tuned up. We are transmitting, no problems there. The computer's fine, let's undo tune. Computer's happy, tuner's happy, everything's fine. All of that last test was done with the buddy pole compared to the DX Commander with the USB cable plugged in. As I unplug the USB cable, we go from S5 to S5. And you can see the USB icon dropped off of the display there. Let's plug it back in and see what the noise floor changes to. Wait for them to shut up. All right, S5 plugged in, S5. So no change on the DX Commander. So no toroids on the USB cable, a different antenna, and no problems at all. So that definitely points me to something going on with the antenna that's causing it and not something with the USB cable. So do we have a solution yet? Let's see if there's anything else left to test. The next test that was requested is to transmit into a dummy load. So I have the coax going into the tuner, which goes into the radio. The radio is connected. You can see the USB comm light there to the computer. Let's do this. Tune. All right, so the radio is in tune mode. Everything's transmitting, everything's fine. And nothing going on, nothing flashing on the computer screen. Can we unkey? We can unkey. All right, so there's dummy load and DX commander versus the buddy pole way out there. Okay, let's keep on moving. Okay, just for reference, since it's been a while since we've done this and we're on a new laptop, if I have the buddy pole connected, which I do, and I have a non-choked USB cable connected, which I do, and I go in and I hit tune, this is what happens. That beep comes out of the laptop speaker, the radio is stuck in transmit mode, sending no modulation at all, and I can't stop it because WSJTX has lost connectivity. And the solution is to shut everything down and start over again. So we turn that off, and we turn that off, and we're back in business after we turn it all back on. And then one other thing we can do while we're connected like this is we can hit the tune button, which causes everything to go crazy. And if I hit the PTT key on the mic, it has no effect at all. Another suggestion that came up was to try all of this over Wi-Fi using WF View or uh, SDR control or something along those lines. I've got SDR control hooked up on my MacBook. I'm gonna do two tests for you. I'm gonna do one with the SDR control software while the Linux laptop is plugged in and the USB cable is plugged in. So we have all the noise. Let's do that. Here is SDR control and I am tuned to 14074 and I'm connected to the IC705. Let's hit the tune button. Okay, that tune button, there it goes. She's tuning up fine. Is it gonna stop tuning? And it stopped tuning just fine. So let's turn off PTT, and that seems to have worked. Let's go take a look at the radio and do it on the radio side. I am over at SDR control on the computer. We're looking at the radio's display. I'm gonna hit tune. Goes through a full tune cycle and exits out. There we go. This last test comes from my friend Greg. Greg says, use a tiny SA with a small antenna attached and see what kind of noise you have. We're outside. We're pretty far away from the house. We're far away from the buddy pole antenna. We're far away from the radio. Let's see what kind of noise we have. So this isn't gonna be the best camera setup, but we have minus 95 dB of noise out here in the middle of nowhere. Let's get over to the buddy pole. Okay, we are back at the buddy pole. Let's take a look, minus 93. Let's get over to the coax. Minus 92, it's getting a little noisier. Let's go closer to the house. Minus 91, let's go inside the house. All right, we are back inside the house and we are at minus 94. Let's go over to the coax here. Minus 88 when we touch the coax. Let's try the USB connection. Minus 86, and now we are unplugged on the radio and unplugged from the computer.
be a little bit better. The last test I can do for you is to choke out the coax. Let's get that done. If you remember, the buddy pole has a coax choke right at the feed point. So we've added another one right there. Let's go inside and take a look at how that makes a change. Oh wow, that looks really good. I do not have the USB cable plugged in though. So we are at S2, I guess, if you're looking at the meter there. Let's go over and plug the USB cable in. And no, maybe, hang on. Okay, let's try it at this frequency. So S2-ish, unplug the USB cable. You can see a change in the waterfall, but not enough. So that choke, plugged back in, that choke really helps. Unplugged, plugged in. So there you go. All right, so that was quite a bit of interesting science there. We had a lot of help from the audience. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. The buddy pole is a fantastic antenna. The buddy pole is not necessarily a problem, quote unquote. It gets the job done, it's portable, it's convenient, it's very wide banded, it'll, it'll handle a lot of bands. It's a fantastic antenna is the point I'm trying to make. There is some noise going on with the 705. And there is some noise going on when you plug in a different radio, like the X6100. What we learned, though, is there's more than one way to do it, which is an old acronym that, that uh, comes about from Perl programming back in the 90s time frame, when Perl was really popular. It's not so popular anymore. There's more than one way to do it. I think, and I encourage others to think the same way, that there's more than one way to do something. There's always a different way to tackle a task. That's how we learn new things. In this case, there's two different ways to solve this problem effectively. One is to choke out the coax, the other one is to choke out the USB. Either way, you're choking out the noise and letting the signals make it make it through. Does it work? Yes. Do both ways work? Yes. Are there lots of ways to do it? Yes. I really, truly appreciate all of the help and all of the information that happened in the chat. I think it's great. A lot of you were asking some pretty open-ended questions, so I was able to close those loops and, and get the information on the table and across the screen to you folks, and that is fantastic. If you want to see the original video that started it all, I'll leave a link to it right here for you to check out. Otherwise, thanks for being awesome.